We are now ready for our next speaker. That is uh, Kita Kurabe. Is that how you pronounce your name? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. So okay. the, the title is um, Semantics of Burmese Zoom Names. Again, my name is Sadaf Munshi. Okay. Um, we have about 20 minutes for the presentation and five minutes for question and answers. Just a moment. No problem. Can't you see my slide? Looks good. Yes. Okay, thank you very much for coming. I'm Keita Kurabe of ILCAA, Tokyo University of Foreign Studies, Japan. Today, I will be talking about semantics of Burmese Zunim. So Zunim means animal name. Okay, goal. Uh, this, in this presentation, uh, the aim of this presentation is to explore Burmese final lexicon animal names with a special attention to its semantics. And this talk is based on more than 500 Burmese animal names, which were collected from Arnold 2000 Dictionary and my fieldwork. So background. The animal name or zunim is an area in Tibet Burma linguistics that is not often studied. Rock 2011 contributed greatly to studies in animal and plant nomenclature, addressing many aerial and universal issues. Also, Arnold 2000 Burmese Dictionary lists a wide range of data on Burmese animal and plant names. However, there are no studies that have systematically investigated Burmese final lexicon. So with this background in mind, in this talk, we will explore Burmese final lexicon, animal names. As a point of departure, I will provide a brief account of morphology related to Burmese animal name formation. So simplex names, simple animal names. So many zoonyms in Burmese cannot be segmented into smaller morphemes. They, simplex zoonyms, come from terms of basic level categories, as shown here. Uh, and this is consistent with the cross linguistic tendency where basic level categories tend to be more simple in contrast to superordinate or subordinate level categories which tend to be more complex. So some examples are given here. A, que, dog, B, chan, cat, C, noir, cow, D, chue, buffalo, buffalo, E, we, pig, F, chue, rat, G, young, rabbit, H, ming, horse, I, sing, elephant, J, meow, monkey, K, che, Four, L, Moe, Snake, Pa, Frog, Na, Fish, like this. So many of them are, come from uh, basic level categories. Okay, next, compound zoonings. Compounding is one of the most productive morphological processes in Burmese. As there are no genuine adjectives in Burmese, only nouns and verbs are productively involved in compounding animal names. And all of the logically possible combinations of nouns and verbs are attested in Burmese animal names, as shown here, where 
and noun plus noun animal names is the most common is the most common in contrast to verb uh, plus noun and verb plus verb. Uh, sorry. Yeah. Just a moment. And these two categories are not very common in contrast to these two, which are very common. Okay. So some examples are given here. So noun plus noun, the dark silver pheasant means pintail. Uh, noun verb, do, be, resemble means caterpillar be, verb noun, shikogon, worship bug, which means praying mantis, and verb plus verb, pian loa, uh, fly hand over, which means uh, swallow. Okay. Most examples of com uh, compound zoonyms are endocentric, consisting of the head noun, head noun that is a hyphen, and the modifier that gives a specific meaning to the head. Uh, noun noun zoonyms are either right head, right headed, like this here, or left headed. So some example of right headed noun noun zoonyms are given here: a, a bazin, needle dragonfly means damsel. Dumb fly, dumb the fly, B, chow button, stone prong means lobster, C, chang, chang wun, cat bear means red panda, D, sapo, samba bug means stag beetle, E, chapo, stone bug means cyton, F, gabale, world turtle means sea turtle, G, yondami, rabbit deer means greater mouse deer. There are also many left-headed noun noun zoonyms in Burmese. A, for example, A, chess so, uh, rat brush means hedgehog. B, the noir fish cow, which means a black spotted black box fish. C, uh, moe bada, snake mercury, sunbeam snake. D, bukla, uh, bubble india, which means white faced jay. E, and the parrot coral, which means panel hanging parrot. F, the fish gold, which means dagger to spike conga. So, like this. Okay. Mm. And Burmese also has some headless compound zooms, as shown here. For example, A. Which literally means us, crouch means Indian night jar. And uh, this literally, uh, and this can be interpreted as, as the one that crouches on the earth. And it refers to Indian night jar. Other examples include uh, B, Panji uh, Zog, nectar sack means purple sunburn. C, Snotido. Uh, Big short means Pacific golden flower. D, Chabetni lotus leaf, lotus leaf step on means brown, bronze uh, winged jasna. E, Yudo uh, shellfish sack means Asian open bill. F, the belle, iron ball carry, which means oriental magpie robin. So there are some headless zoonies too. Some Burmese animal names illustrate elaborate expressions, which are expressions which are quadri morphemic compounds, whereby either the first and third or the second and fourth morphemes are identical. A few examples of elaborate animal-related expressions are given here. So A, ye bo, ye ma, water bug, water mite, which means aquatic insects. B, na de, na ma, fish small, fish mite, means small fish. C, kwe do, red do, dog resemble, pig resemble. Yeah. Hog, ba, hog badger, B, 
Bedu can do that resemble water resemble, which refers to a crater. B, part the bind, not the bind, a trog half, which half, which means tadpole. Eh, pogon, small gun, bug creature, might creature, which refers to bug, like this. Okay, now let's move on to semantics of Burmese animal names. First category is locational habitual. So animal names that are based on their preferred habitats. And this category, semantic category, is semantically very productive in Burmese animal nomenclature. Nomenclature, for example, A, Lechue, Paddy Rat, refers to Bowo uh, because of uh, it is called, called the soul because of its preferred habitat, Paddy. Other examples uh, include B, Tang, uh, tang Se, Mountain Goat, means Burmese uh, Goral. T, Tanda Nga, Coral Fish, means three, uh, three spotted angolfish. D, Tipping Moe. A tree snake refers to a slender bone snake. E lake you paddy a shellfish refers to a pond snail. F the bow flower bug means a bed bug. And G saopo book bug refers to silver fish. So these names are based on a locational habitual category, semantic category. Another very common uh, semantic categories is appearance of features of other objects. So animal names based on the appearance of other objects that resemble or associated with the animal are also very common cross-linguistically. This category is also semantically very productive in Burmese animal names. For example, A, a UFO, Leaf bag uh, is a uh, fish referred to Asiatic rice ball or is so called because it resembles to the leaf. Okay, and uh, other examples are uh, B, uh, Nocratia fish dog tank referred to so C, uh, the sin, uh, fish ear. Uh, Fish elephant ear refers to bat fish. D, cray but blue a dog ogre, a blue dog. E, a no crew, ah, no crew. Fish caterpillar refers to a walking cat fish. F, charlotte tiger crow refers to giant clam. G, Lede donga, a bowman fish refers to archer fish. So these names, are, uh, these animals are named based on appearance of other features, or other objects. Okay. Animals are also often characterized by uh, their color, shape, and size. And this semantic category is also productive in Burmese animal names. For example, A, a, a Chue Pu, rat white, which means white rat, referred to house mouse based on its color. And other examples, a, B, Moe Zeng, snake green, green snake means bamboo snake. C, Lipiawa, butterfly yellow, yellow butterfly, refers to grass yellow, D, uh, Zin, Zin dragonfly large, large dragonfly refers to cicada, E, Zin Le, dragonfly class diminutive refers to uh, damselfly, damselfly, F, Ye, Lemma, bird sum refers to hill premier, like this. Uh, next category is geographical origin. This is actually uncommon. 
exotic species are sometimes named in relation to their geographical origin. This semantic category is actually not very common in Burmese animal names, as far as I'm aware of. But this category is more common in plant names in Burmese in our data. Anyway, in some examples include A, Chakla, Samba, India, Indian Samba refers to blue bull, B, Chekla, Parrot, India refers to gray headed parakeet, C, Yekla, Bird, India, Indian bird refers to black necked frog, D, Dankla, Peacock, India refers to gray peacock, present, E, Bukla, Berber, India, refer to white faced jay, and it says, Tayo Bumbe, Chinese spot billed duck, refer to mandarin duck. So, uh, Burma is surrounded by uh, India and chi China, so uh, uh, there are some animal names uh, related to India and China. China. Okay. Another uh, animal or plant names are sometimes modified by another animal or plant names. This kind of uh, intra and inter kingdom associations can be classified into the four types as given here. So type A, flora, floric, where a plant name modifies another plant name, such as lemongrass. B, a fauna floric, where an animal name modifies a plant name, such as tiger lily. C, fauna phanic, where an animal name modifies another animal names, such as a zebra fish. And D, flora phonic, where a plant name modifies an animal name, such as banana slug. So there are four types. And Burmese exhibits all types of the intra and inter kingdom associations. For example, fauna phonic compounds are an animal name modified by another animal name. And this uh, category is very common, quite common in Burmese animal nomenclature. And most of them are head final. Some examples are A, John the mean rabbit deer means greater mouse deer. B, red chan, pig dinosaurus, Sumatran dinosaurus. C, Tick uh, o leopard camel refers to giraffe. D, Craven, dog bear means raccoon. D, Chang Wun, cat bear means red panda. F, Lin Xin, eagle squirrel refers to Formosan squirrel. G, Sapo, sambal bug means stag beetle. H, Ninja. Horse tiger means zebra, and I, chamba, cat frog, refers to weasel. Next is uh, another very common category is uh, fauna floric, which is a plant name modified by an animal name. And this is also very common category in Burmese animal nomenclature. For example, A, a sagaleban sparrow. A flower refers to rocket laxpa. So it refers to a, a kind of plant, not kind of animal. So its, it's head should be a, a flower. And B, Seinan, goat coriander refers to, a, I, I don't know how to pronounce it, but some kind of plant. C, monkey bulb refers to purple yam. D, Chanban, cat flower, refer to uh, Bitex trifolia. E, Chanwi, tiger turmeric, means wild turmeric. And F, Moeba B, mangoose tree, refer to uh, this uh, 
plant and zi xin yanjin elephant tomato means uh, chili tomato it's about five minutes left okay thank you very much <laughs> by contrast flora and uh, fauna compounds where uh, animal names modified by plant names are relatively rare in our limited data but there are some examples for example a a UFO leaf duck means Asiatic rice ball. So here a plant name uh, modifies uh, an animal name. B, Gutsun uh, Uppo seed potato duck refers to seed potato weevils. C, Na Penezi fish jackfruit seed means a species of anchovy. D, uh, Gobi do Lepia, cabbage butterfly, refer to cabbage butterfly. And E, uh, Uban He, uh, some kind of plant, plus uh, bird means uh, oriental data. So there, uh, uh, this, cat this category is relatively there, but there are some examples. Okay, finally, uh, some Burmese pseudonyms are semantically endocentric. Burmese exhibits a rich array of metaphorical animal names. So some examples are given here. A. Charlotte uh, tiger crow means a uh, gi giant clam. B. Uh, water rat means cuttlefish. C. Jekami Water deer means back, back swimmer. B, eh, water pal means starfish. E, eh, ye, 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 water ghost refers to oct octopus. F, ye, not the me, water spit girl means a scorpion fish. G, bindebang, sea flower refers to the anemone. H, pinde pu, C, porcupine, refers to the urchin. And I, pinde pamon, even, uh, uh, and there are even pinde pamon, sea bread, which refers to starfish. So these are metaphorical animal names found in a uh, Burmese final lexicon. Okay. Let me summarize my talk. So this talk explored the Burmese final lexicon with a special focus on its semantics. So main findings are summarized here. A, a one, a myriad of Burmese zones are created by means of compounding, which is the most, one of the most productive morphological processes in the language. Two, a uh, very productive semantic categories exploited in Burmese final lexicon include uh, locational habitual and appearance uh, as illustrated as il illustrated by paddy uh, shellfish for a uh, pond snail like that and three the intra and inter kingdom associations are uh, well attested in the rich array of Burmese final nomenclature, such as uh, eagle, snake, uh, leaf bag, sparrow flower, coconut banana, and so on. And four, metaphorical animal names are also widely found in the language, as illustrated by sea bread for starfish and sea porcupine for sea archer. Okay, thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much for a very um, exciting presentation. I really loved the data. It was very rich data. A lot of very, very interesting data. And I actually was looking at phonological changes also <clears throat> that were um, in the data. Uh, I will invite uh, comments, questions for five minutes, and uh, then we can wrap up.
I have a question. Yes. Um, a comment and a question. I'm I'm always very interested in how insects are named in these languages. Um, you have, um, and, and so I've always had this idea that there's kind of a general word for insect or bug, maybe crawling bug and flying bug, and then in, in some of these uh, language communities, and then the different uh, particular types of in, insects are named according to some of the strategies that you describe in your talk through various types of compounding or metaphorical extension. So you had a, you had a few insect names there, not not too too many. Do you, do you have you noticed anything in particularly interesting about insects? Uh, in particular, in, in where I work in Nepal, bees are are quite interesting. Uh, like the difference between wild bees and domesticated bees, because there are some beekeepers. So that you know, honey bees and and then other types of wasps and bees that are not domestic have other types of compounded names. Thank you very much. Yes, uh, general uh, word for insect, there are two types, two words. One is account, which uh, literally means a creature. And so the word creature also means uh, insect in Burmese. Mm -hmm. Another is a uh, foe, uh, which also means a virus. Mm -hmm. And this word also refers to insect in Burmese. And, Yes, and in one interesting uh, tendency uh, I found in uh, previous studies, pre previous studies uh, about uh, animal names in general, is that uh, animal names tend to be longer, longer. The syllable of the animal names tend to be longer. And uh, this is claimed by uh, uh, Nathan Badenov in his paper published just last year. And, and so, uh, in some languages, uh, animal names tend to be uh, tend to have um, more, many syllables. Yeah. And, and as far as I'm aware of, uh, this tendency uh, 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 does not uh, do not uh, applicable to to our data uh, to our data limited data at least. Uh, but yeah, it's yeah, this tendency. It sounds very interesting, I think. And then one more quick comment, if you don't mind, on your elaborate expressions. Um, in, in one of the language communities I work in, in Nepal, NAR, they have a, a, a glorious name for a particular kind of millipede uh, uh, that, that they don't like because it, it, um, it has a sting accompanied with it. And the, and the name for it literally translate to the insect whose name shall not be spoken. That's the name of the um, millipede. And so it's, this, it's a kind of phrasal, it's a phrasal name for an, for an insect. And I've always been interested in these rare ca cases of elaborate expressions as to how, how tight of a word they are. Like, do they, do they package tightly as a single lexical unit in terms of how they behave in the grammar, you know, how if it's a noun, for example, in terms of how it might pluralize or or, or um, host case marking these kinds of things. Thank you very much. Yes, Nathan Badenov showed that animal names tend to have elaborate expressions, so and they tend to be longer. Yes, actually, yeah, I mean animal. In general, words for aquatic insects uh, are made up of elaborate expression in Burmese too. And general word for bugs also uh, involve elaborate expression. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. That was uh, really, uh, I actually was looking at so many examples that we, I think we're running out of time. I had some comments, but uh, it's almost 9.30. Uh, I was especially looking at one of the examples, Fro frog half, fish half. How would you say half frog and half fish oh, as opposed to that? Like if it was a phrase, would, would you just change the order or what? If it wasn't a compound? For a, a part of buying. Yeah, I mean, let's, let's imagine it was not, if it, if we didn't use a compound there, we just used a regular phrase instead. 
How would you say it? Oh, yes, uh, I think there is no word uh, part buying environment and not buying. So uh, this word should be uh, compounded as elaborate expression. Do I an answer your question? No, that's okay. Yeah, I guess. I mean part. So, yeah, right. Well, that, that means one, and pine means uh, part. Yeah. One, one part. Yeah. One interest. Thank you. It's a very interesting presentation. There's one interesting fact about these elaborates, and that is that even the syllables which reduce normally in compounds do not reduce in these elaborates. So the um, small fish, Malang Ahua. Um, that has the full form ga, but all of the words for different kinds of fish have the reduced form ga in the first syllable. I think it's interesting also to look, um, and this is a wonderful way to look at it semantically, but I think we also need to look phonologically, and that is to say uh, which of the first syllable head nouns actually reduce, like fish, ga becoming ga, and which of them never reduce, like po.